worship leaders and those who love to worship. In past episodes, I've talked about what worship is, according to the Bible, and what worship isn't. But what is praise? Let's talk about it. Welcome to Blueprint Sounds. My name is Nathan Smith. Thanks for joining me. Today, we're going to be talking about praise and how the Hebrews in the Old Testament praised. But before we get to that, I want to give you something. If you go to my website, blueprintsounds.com, you can get access to my free PDF called 25 Chart Topping Arrangement Tricks. If you have a worship song that you're doing with your team that's okay but not great and you wish you could make it better, download or print off this chart and it gives you 25 great ideas for arrangement tricks. It gives you a couple of sentences about why that trick works, and then it gives you a song from the radio where you can hear the trick, and then you can implement it in your own worship practice. Again, you can go to my website, blueprintsounds.com, or you can click on the link nearby, which is www.blueprintsounds.com forward slash 25 tricks. All right, with that said, let's get to today's topic. So in the last episodes, we talked about what the word worship means in Hebrew, and it's very simple. It means to bow. It can also mean to fall down. But the idea remains. It's about putting yourself on the ground. Well, what is praise? Is praise what we called worship music back in the 90s? Like, it, is that it? Is worship music the slow songs and is praise the fast songs? What's the difference? Well, again, it's helpful to go back to Hebrew and look at what they defined as praise. Hebrews in the Old Testament had a very well-developed sense of what praise is. They had seven words for it, at least. We translate all of those words as praise in the Old Testament. So let's go through those and talk about what the Hebrews thought of as praise. Our first word is yada, which means to throw or to cast. So the extended hand, that's the idea that we're getting with yada. It can also mean to confess or to laud or to praise. Let's look at that word in scripture. Here we are in Genesis 29, 35, and Leah, Jacob's wife, has given birth to her fourth child. And she conceived again and bore a son and said, this time I will praise Yada, the Lord. Therefore, she named him Judah. Then she stopped bearing. So the name Judah comes from the word Yada, to cast or to throw or to give thanks or praise. It's very interesting and not at all accidental that David comes from the tribe of Judah and that Jesus is called the lion of the tribe of Judah or the tribe of praise. The second word that we'll look at is related. It is toda, which means thanksgiving, and it has that same idea of an extended hand. So here we are in Leviticus. Leviticus 7.11 Now this is the law of the sacrifice of peace offerings which shall be presented to the Lord. If he offers it by way of thanksgiving, that's the word todah, then along with the sacrifice of thanksgiving he shall offer unleavened cakes mixed with oil and unleavened wafers spread with oil and cakes of well-stirred fine flour mixed with oil. So in Leviticus, God is explaining the law and there is a specific thanksgiving offering and that's called the Toda offering. So thanksgiving is also praise. Our third word is halal, which means to be clear, to shine, to rave, to boast, to be clamorously foolish. All of those are contained in the word halal. So it's quite a dynamic word. It's actually the root of our word hallelujah, which means praise the Lord. Let's go to the Psalms. Here we are in Psalms 18.3. I shall call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised, halal, and I am saved from my enemies. The word halal was also used during the feasts, so it's very much a celebration word. Our next word is the word barak, which means to kneel, to bless, or to congratulate. And we see that God actually blesses creation in Genesis. Genesis 1.22, God blessed them, God baraked them, saying, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the waters in the seas, and let birds multiply on the earth. So Barak means to bless, either someone lesser blessing someone greater, or in this case, God, the greater, blessing someone lesser. Our next word is Shabak, and this means to address in a loud tone, to praise, to glory, to triumph, or commend. We see this one again in the Psalms. Here we are in Psalm 145, verse 3. 
Great is the Lord and highly to be praised, and his greatness is unsearchable. One generation shall praise, Shabbat, your works to another. So here we have one generation telling of the good works of God to another, and that is Shabbat, that is also praise. Our next word is zamar, which means to pluck the strings of a musical instrument or to thrum with the fingers. We see this one in the Psalms too. Psalms 21, 13. Be exalted, O Lord, in your strength. We will sing and praise, or zamar, your power. So not just singing, but playing the musical instrument is praise. Finally, we have the word tehillah, which means song of praise or glory or spontaneous song. That one's also in the Psalms. 22, 3. Yet you are holy, O you who are enthroned upon the praises, the tehillah, of your people. So God actually inhabits that word enthroned, actually in Hebrew means to sit down. He sits down in the tehillah, which is the song, the spontaneous song of his people. So there are several things worth noting when we think about all seven of those words and what praise is to the Old Testament Hebrews. For the Hebrews, it was incredibly dynamic. That meant that it went from kneeling and confessing sins all the way up to raving and shouting and boasting. It included singing and playing instruments and lifting your hands and even telling of the good works of God to the next generation. All of that was how they praised the Lord. And praise was so much a part of their culture, they had seven words for it. Not only is Hebrew praise very dynamic, it's very passionate. I mean, that they had a word, hallelujah, that, ex- that expresses boasting and being, being clamorously foolish, that's quite something. And the final takeaway is that praise does not necessarily mean singing and lyrics. One re- I think that sometimes worship musicians fall into is that they view themselves, the band, you know, bass player, guitarist, drummer, as the backing band for the singers who lead the congregation in praise. And that's not at all true. When you play your instrument, that is itself praise unto God, apart from singing. Singing, there's another word for that. But zamar, while it can be accompanied with singing, the idea of that word, the picture that's put in your brain, is of your fingers moving and strumming a harp. That is praise to God. So worship musicians, remember that that is itself praise and take that honor and that responsibility seriously. Hey, I hope that episode helps you. And if you want, I would give you this challenge. Go through the Psalms and read some scripture. Once you find the word praise, look in a concordance. They have them online for free. And see if you can see what the actual word for praise, which one of those seven, or there may even be more, is used in place of the word praise. I'm sure that you'll learn a little bit more about what it means to praise God. Until next week, God bless and goodbye.